Julian Lisa has spent a decade attempting to forge coalition support for a constitutionally enshrined voice. But unable to corral the Liberal Party under Peter Dutton, the Shadow Attorney-General's going his own way. I believe the time for the voice has come. Quitting the opposition front bench to dodge Shadow Cabinet's binding position to oppose the government's proposed model. What I'm doing today is to resign on a point of principle so I can campaign, yes. He still has issue with Labor's referendum wording and is urging changes, but would ultimately vote yes. He's at odds with uh, the overwhelming majority of the Liberal Party party room. I'm absolutely in lockstep with the position that has been put by the opposition. Julian Lisa isn't alone in Liberal ranks in supporting The Voice. Tasmanian MP Bridget Archer has spoken out in favour, as has the Tasmanian Premier, Australia's most senior elected Liberal official. And former Minister for Indigenous Australians Ken Wyatt dumped his Liberal Party membership in disgust. And I suspect these Liberals will not be the last to break from Mr Dutton's partisan narrow position. At least three Liberal moderates spoke against opposing the voice in last week's shadow ministry meeting, although Peter Dutton's showing no signs he'll be dissuaded from his position. The government uh, under Mr Albanese is proposing a Canberra-based voice which will be the voice of the elites, not of people on the ground. Given that Peter Dutton declared the Liberal stance on the voice weeks before a parliamentary committee completes its inquiry into the referendum, there's little prospect of any meaningful change to the final wording. That said, Labor will have to be a lot more nimble in its advocacy for The Voice to prevent a Dutton-led no campaign undermining the national goodwill. Goodwill that Julian Lisa fears is not assured. Andrew Probin, ABC News, Canberra.